Hi friends, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It's set chat time and I'm full of energy because it is only 11.38 in the morning a.m. people, Friday when I'm filming this. And um, I'm actually very excited because I get to leave the house today. Oh, it's little things. I haven't left the house other than to walk the dog in like a week um, and Last week it was to do groceries and buy too many oranges, as you recall from last week's video when we are still working through those oranges, man. So many oranges. Um, and walking the dog, I mean, the last two days it's been so cold. This morning I took her out. I, I, I had, I put, a, I put one of my sweatshirts on her because it was 10 degrees with a wind chill of below seven. And so I'm like, if she wanted to go out, I'm like, oh, it's so cold. So, and I, I've got like my ski pants with bib, with a bib, the, my wool coat that goes down to my knees. Um, winter boots, a hood, a hat, thin to late gloves, and I'm like, oh, it's poor short-haired mutt that I have. How is she going to cope? And she just loves the snow. She's got part um, husky and Akita in her, although she's got a short, she's got short fur. Um, she just loves it. So I, I put on one of my sweatshirts and I tied the, the sleeves around her chest and I zipped it up and I used a scrunchie to like gather up the extra material so if she had to go pee she wouldn't like pee on it and um, then I put a harness over the sweatshirt so she was quite a sight. We were quite a sight because I had like my scarf like over my mouth and nose, sunglasses on, my hat pulled down, absolutely no exposed skin. I probably looked at the invisible man going up for a walk but trying to cover up so they didn't look invisible. It was a, uh, it was quite a sight. So we did a half a mile loop around the cul-de-sac and I was good with that. She was like, what? We're not going further? Cause usually we do about three miles. Um, but not that cold. So uh, we've ordered her another coat. We did order her a coat and we ordered an extra, extra large uh, because that's what the sizing chart said she would need. And they sent an extra, extra small and it like fit in an envelope. And it must have been for like a little like teacup chihuahua or something. I don't know. It was tiny. So we had to return that. But uh, we are supposed to get a warm snap into the 30s. So hopefully it will be here by the time we get more frigid cold weather. But anyway, that was uh, that was my morning so far. But I'm excited because not only do I get to leave the house, because yesterday my husband was like, I'm going to go do some groceries, get everything for Christmas dinner because we're having Christmas. Well, we're just staying home for Christmas. So it's just um, us and the kids. And um, we've never done like a Christmas dinner before. Um, we've always gone to my parents and then my sisters last few years. Um, so it's instead of being kind of like bummed out that we're not going, you know, there for Christmas, we're going to be, you know, we're going to do it up. We're going to live it up. We're going to have, we, it was our year to host Christmas Eve for my husband's side of the family, but we're not doing that. So um, we're just, we're going to cook. We're going to make the stuff. And and um, yeah, so uh, when he said he was going to do groceries today, I was like, well, you know, I really want to go in and kind of finish up some stocking stuffer type shopping and stuff. So, um, you know, I asked if he mind if I went with him and he didn't. And then I, this morning I'm like, you know, you want to go to lunch? And he said, yes. So we're going to go to lunch. I'm going to have an adult beverage, which will make my shopping much more pleasant because I'm not a shopper. I don't really like shopping, but I have not. I, I went, Chris, I did in-person Christmas shopping once and it was like two months ago and I was just so overwhelmed that I just ordered everything I needed on Amazon for the most part. Uh, luckily Jason does so much of the shopping. Um, I'm very, very thankful for that. And, uh, but I want to, you know, get a, get a few like stockingy things. Um, I'm still waiting. A couple last things that I've ordered should arrive today. Hopefully they, they, uh, they shipped yesterday. I ordered them like a week and a half ago and they shipped yesterday. And then it says, we'll be there by eight. I'm like, you're not getting here by 8 PM. You know, <laughs> we've had a snowstorm, you know, it left from like Massachusetts, getting all up to Maine. I'm hoping it comes today, but it will be here by Christmas, which I was a little worried about. Um, so that's good. Um, oh, what else? What else this week? So I'm very excited about that. My makeup will not go to waste today. It never goes to waste. I may put makeup on to do the sat chat. That's like the only time I put makeup on all week. And, uh, but now I actually get to go out into the world with makeup on. Of course, you know, only see my eyes and eyebrows, but <laughs> there's plenty on my eyes and eyebrows to, uh, <laughs> to make it worthwhile. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm kind of excited. I'm giddy. I'm going. I'm leaving the house. Woo! <laughs> Oh, I don't get out much. It doesn't take much to uh, to excite me, apparently. Um, so yesterday I spent most of the day scrapbooking and I was kind of like, I was kind of having a retro experience because I went, I was looking just for something to listen to while I was working. I like to have something on in the background and I don't want news because it's just too darn depressing right now. 
Um, so I looked up this old podcast I used to love to listen to, and the podcasts aren't available anymore, but on YouTube, um, this podcast host used to post her podcasts, and it's Noelle Hyman. She ran the Paper Clipping Roundtable, and since she's she's closed that business, I think she's a yoga instructor now, um, and she would just have the best scrapbooking podcast. And so I'm like, I want to see if I can find one of those old episodes to listen to. And I found this live stream that she had done like six years ago. Maybe is that four or six? It was either 2014 or 2016 can't remember. I think it was 2016. Anyway, uh, so it was like an hour and a half long, like perfect. I'm going to put that on while I'm like trimming my papers. And here's the actual mom. If you're watching, stop watching right now. Okay. So every year I make my mom a scrapbook calendar. I told you guys about that last week. Well, um, of course I'll have to, we'll have to mail this or just kind of like kind of sneaky go down to my parents' town and like drop them off on a doorstep or something. But so I made the scrapbook calendar. What I do is I print out a a, a month, a year long, you know, calendar, and I print it like landscape form. I only find one page here. I don't want to. I don't want to give it all away in case mom is being a brat and watching. Um, but like say, here's one page. So I print it so the calendar is on the cardstock, and then um, I take all the sheets plus one for the cover, and I bind it together. And uh, maybe I should take a do a maybe I'll record a little a little flip through of this so after Christmas I can share it. Let me know if you want me to do that. I I've got it like loosely wrapped. I want to keep looking at it. So <laughs> before I give it away, I want to keep looking at it before I wrap it up in a bow for good. Um, so let me know if you want to see a flip through of that. Uh, so I got that done yesterday. So I'm listening to this Q and A. It was a Q and A about CHA back when that big trade show used to be called CHA and it was in California. It was a big deal and there was a lot of scrapbooking and paper. Uh, crafting and it was just interesting to hear about the trends but a lot of the trends were still like what's going on today and as I'm like they're talking about all the trends I'm like huh most of my pages here follow the trends from six years ago or whenever it was and then I'm looking at the scrap of paper that I'm using and it's all like 2014, 2016, <laughs> but uh, but hey, that was the heyday, wasn't it? Actually, it was probably before then. But I was like, uh, I was like, oh, I really still like this paper. <laughs> I'm so out of style. Um, but hey, you already knew that. Uh, anyway, it was really a nice way to spend the day. Um, I had finished up most of my work early this week because it was one of those uh, weeks where like you've got a bunch of projects that are kind of going over a few weeks and then everything finishes up at once. So um, like I had to voice something over. That, uh, that just got edited and I um, oh just had some admin work to do on the computer but for the most part I mean I was done for the week so that was so nice so I could spend the whole day just taking my time on that scrapbook calendar I really had a pleasant time and just listening to that old podcast was just like ah ah the feels the memories I really missed that podcast but um, but it was nice to find the art find some archives on YouTube so it's called a paper clipping roundtable if you're curious you want to check it out it's, it's very entertaining of course you know the information is going to be a little out of date but Hey, who cares? It's fun. It's nice to listen to friendly voices on the internet, I think. And um, and I do wish uh, Noelle Hyman and her husband or family all the best. I'm sure they're having a wonderful, uh, a wonderful future. Um, you know, with their with their endeavors they've gone on to. But it was just it was such a special, such a special little podcast that um, that hey, if you're looking for some cheerfulness, go check it out. Back from simpler, more innocent times, not during the pandemic. Uh, what else? Oh, so speaking of the blog, I was, I had to, um, and my, my blog's been acting very strange and it is very out of date because I have not changed the theme of it since like when I started it in 2008, I think it was. Um, so it is a little dated looking and I did it myself. So that just shows you how a very non-techy person, you can, you can kind of just imagine if you've never been to my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com, you can kind of imagine that... <laughs> that with my technical experience using a, a do-it-yourself blog service, you can imagine how, how chic it is. Um, but I was always happy with it because it was very kind of crafty looking and it was just, you know, it was very homespun, let me tell you that. I mean, we didn't have a music player and animation going on there, but it was very homespun. Um, and, but it, it just worked, you know, I had a three, a three column version that the the theme I used was called three column dig and it's a WordPress theme. And I always thought WordPress sites looked a little more chic than the blogger sites back then. I have no idea uh, how they look now. I really haven't. Uh, gosh, I don't go to blogs as often. I do try to seek out blogs and I subscribe to ones that I like because I do enjoy reading a blog versus social media because I just feel like it's a little bit more in depth. I don't think people use their blogs as much as they used to, but it's really a shame because I like that format of just kind of cozying in and and listening to what somebody has to say, reading what somebody has to say on their own platform when they can control everything instead of just kind of like yelling and trying to get your attention as you scroll by. So I love blogs and I like blogging. Um, although I, don't, I, I think my, I definitely don't blog 
as in depth as I used to. My blogs are definitely here's the video, here's a quick blurb about it. You know, I don't I don't go in in depth as I used to, but um, maybe I will. Maybe I'll start doing that some more. But anyway, hey, New Year's coming. Um, so anyway, I was like, I I really I've been telling myself for a while I really ought to update this. I really ought to look at a new theme. You can't even get this theme anymore. I don't think this theme has been available for like six or seven years. Um, like they retired it because probably because it's so out of date. But lately I've been noticing that it's starting to like break down in areas and like on my laptop. So I have like these six tabs that go across the top of my page. So you get the main blog page where you see the newest article and you can scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and read all the old articles. And then um, in a reverse chronological order. And then I have pages. So I have a page of um, like upcoming classes, which would be like if I'm going, if I'm teaching at a stamp show or I'm teaching, you know, in person somewhere, I'd have that. And then um, I'd have a page of my resume, which I have not updated in years, but it has like my list of publications and things like that. And then, um, so it just, it needs an all-around update. Um, then I have like a page, it's just my disclosure and disclaimer, which talks about affiliate links and that sort of thing. Um, just so everybody can find that stuff easily. And then on the sides, I have links to my classes over at Teachable, my online classes. And then I've got links to, like, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter, uh, which is, I think my subscription is full. I think I've run out of, like, <laughs> on the newsletter plan that I'm on, I think I've, like, maxed it out. Um, and then I've got like on the other sidebar, there's like, you can find like this little mini YouTube player if you want to go to my YouTube channel, which you, you're supposed to have your most current video, but it's like in a video on there for like, from like, I don't know, five or six years ago when I was like making macrame, this macrame plant hanger video random, which I like, I've only done one macrame project in my life and that was it. And for some reason that one's there. It should be my most recent video. And then uh, there's like a little calendar, then there's... I don't know, maybe like a cloud tag of different categories that I have. Anyway, things have just been working kind of weird. And now you can't see the what the titles of all my pages are on little tabs. And today I went to do my blog post and none of the videos match the articles. So I like, I, like, I was looking at yesterday's uh, blog, or the most recent blog, which was two days ago. It, had a, it was a review for Parkour Markers. And there's the artwork for the Parkour Markers. And then there's a, there's a video of... Um, the previous day's video, which was uh, the dreidel card, the watercolor um, Hanukkah card. And then I scroll down to the watercolor Hanukkah card and it's a video of Sketchbook Sunday. And then like every video was like off by a day. And it, well, first I thought, well, maybe I copied the wrong link and put it in there. I embedded the wrong thing. But then as I was scrolling down, like every video is a day behind. I'm like, what? It is so random. It's so random that things that are messing up on this blog, but it's starting to all like kind of, kind of crash right now. So I need to, uh, I need to spend a little time picking a new theme there. So my blog should look a little chicer. And the other thing I really didn't like about it was I think that like back when I picked that theme, it was designed for like when computer monitors were more square and not like widescreen they were more like the TV the old uh, the old TV proportions like the 4 by 3 proportion instead of the 16 by 9 proportion so like it's kind of squinched in the middle of the screen you have all the space on the sides it's like why doesn't it spread out in the screen so that the columns are on the edge and you got more to read in the center and plus I would like my font to be a little bit bigger because like I have kind of a hard time reading it I wish the font was larger um, Maybe I'm in the minority when I'm editing the font is big, but when I'm like reading it back, like reading the, on the page, it seems like the font's a little on the small side. So I'd like something with a larger font. Um, and I'm sure like my viewers probably would like that too, because I think most of my viewers are probably my age, maybe a little older. So they might have, you know, middle age eye issues where they would like a larger print. Um, so yeah, so that's, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tackle that. And I, I could have my husband do that cause he's very, you know, techie and stuff, but I think I can handle, I can handle the blog stuff. I mean, it's like a do it yourself thing. And the ironic thing is that, um, well, two ironic things. One thing is that like WordPress has been like, I'm on the free plan, by the way, I'm such a cheapskate. Um, so, <laughs> so WordPress has been like on my case, like the last year or so to upgrade to a pro plan. I'm thinking this thing is breaking down. I'm not giving you money now. I'm going to give you money 10 years ago when it was working really good, but I'm not giving you money now. And, um, and then, uh, what's the other thing? Oh, and then I've been contacted by a couple different, uh, uh, you know, web designers offering to help me with my <laughs> problematic blog. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, no, no, cheapskate. I'm on the free plane. Do you think I'm going to hire a web designer? I mean, come on, come on now. I got, I spend my money on art supplies, not on, uh, not on my 
not on my blog. And especially considering the fact that like people don't view blogs like they do, like they used to. They're more like looking on social media. Um, so yeah, most of my, like if you're watching a YouTube video, if you're watching one of my videos, I mean, some of the traffic comes from my blog, some of the views come from my blog, but it's mostly coming from YouTube or coming from another social media, like clicking over from a social media, even though I promote the blog posts on, um, on Facebook and Twitter and uh, Instagram. You know, still, most people are, are seeing stuff on social media. Most people don't bother reading the, the blog post, which I can understand. People are busy. That's why I, I just like have everything set to post out on these different networks so I can catch people where they want to be. Um, I don't personally like to be on social media too much because I get distracted. Then I kind of, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like time well spent. It's time well spent, you know, not time well spent. <laughs> it's like, oh, I spent that time all right. Um, so that's that's on my that's on my list of things to do. Um, oh, this week has been like a, a marker week. It's, I feel like I've been doing a lot of markers this week, which I have, um, and I don't hate it. I, I enjoy coloring with markers. It's calming. It's it's nice. And um, this project is not up yet. Well, no, it's not up when I'm recording this. Maybe it'll be up by the time you see it. But it's a little gift box with house mouse. I'm gonna hold that in front of my face so it doesn't try to focus on my face. But isn't that cute? It looks like a little book it could sit on your shelf. And the thing I like about this is that if um, if you wanted, you could make like, if you say you're like, uh, well, you're probably not hosting Christmas this year, but if you did have like a Christmas where you have a big get together, you could make up a bunch of these and then like decorate one for each of your family members and put in the like, gifts and you could stack them all up like on a bookshelf or on your mantle and it wouldn't be in the way and it would be you know, really cute. Also be a cute party favor, but I think it's kind of big for a party favor. It definitely could hold some really sweet gifts. So, um, or even like, you know, technically sweet gifts, like sweets. So, I thought it was kind of cute. It just kind of sits there on your shelf doing its own thing, doing its own business. I like that. Uh, I used up, I used up some old stuff. That's nice. Use that house mouse stamp. I bought it at a yard sale like 14 years ago. So people might be a little upset if that's not available. I don't think it is. Um, Stampendous, I think, Yes, yeah, Stampendous, I believe, has a current license to House Mouse Design Stamps, and they, uh, I don't think they have that one called, it's called Marshmallow Bounce, and I don't think that that one's currently being sold, but you can find it on eBay, but man, oh man, you'd expect to pay 40 bucks for that sucker if you want to buy it on eBay. Um, and then I tried a really inexpensive set. I had a, a set to review by Parku, and uh, I actually had a decent amount of a few pastel colors. It was a good assortment, 80 colors, um, like 30 bucks. You really can't beat it. And I did that little, did a demo of that feather. Of course, you could follow along with whatever markers you have um, on that. Now, I will show coloring on this. This We used the new Ohuhu pastel set, which I just reviewed, which is very nice. It's a brush, dual brush um, tip marker, and they just came out with a like a lighter grade of pastels so it's not like your Copic triple zero colors it'd be more like your Copic double zero colors um so I really I really like that a lot it was easy to blend out to white a lot of fun and then I colored one of my favorites oh I love okay house mouse and flower fairies I'm not like a real cutesy person but man those flower fairies and the house mouse I just absolutely love those stamps and this was, I think, T. Rose. I bought all of the house, um, not all the house mouse, holy cow, I'm not a millionaire. I bought all of the, um, all of the flower fairy stamps when they came out. This was like probably 2012. It, there was a site called um, Custom Crops and they actually got bought by Hallmark Scrapbook, is now the owner of that company and they are fantastic as well. Both companies were just so awesome. Anyway, I bought all the, um, Crafters Companions Flower Fairy Stamps. These little flowers were, came from that stamp set too. And I am so glad I did because they weren't out for very long and then they were discontinued. And it's like, oh my gosh, I wish a company would license those out. They're the Cicely Mary Barker Baker um, Flower Fairies. It's a famous, she's a famous illustrator. Um, I think, um, I don't know if it was quite Victorian times, maybe a little bit later. I think somewhere around turn of the century, 1900, somewhere around there, I think. Uh, beautiful bot botanical illustrations, these gorgeous little flower fairies that looked like little children. They were so cute. Um, so I just love those stamps. They're so sweet. And whenever I get a chance, man, I pull those out. But I always feel a little bad because someone always asks me, where'd you get those stamps? Now, I think you could probably search flower fairy coloring pages and find those images. And maybe you might be able to print them out to the size you want. Often they're PDFs if you're getting a coloring page, but if you print them to be like two to a page or four to a page, or I think it's like in your printing, printer 
settings you can say print it like a booklet or something like that and it'll print it like a PDF half the size so it can be more appropriate for cards um, versus a big coloring page that you might not have a use for so um, you know having having kids I've printed out so many coloring pages and when they were little they'd always be like oh can you I want a coloring page of Elmo or I want a coloring page of a transformer or whatever so um, it was always so much nicer to print them out than to buy a coloring book and the coloring books for kids usually had that crappy newsprint paper and I always let the kids use my supplies so my, you know good supplies don't really work that great on the the kind of crappy newsprint unless you're using pastels or something and I generally didn't have pastels out for the kids because you know they couldn't get the detail they wanted and plus they were really messy so um, they would like to use my markers or my colored pencils and they just worked so much better on like printer paper or cardstock so uh, so try that if you're looking for the flower fairy images but you can't find them um, and what else oh my so like I mentioned I'm in a great mood today but I was in a kind of a just a I don't know ugh, mood <laughs> I think a lot of people have met this year it's just been one of those ugh, years <laughs> ugh, the 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 sound effect for 2020 that would be just about right, wouldn't it? And I was like, uh, I was like cleaning up and oh, oh, I cleaned my yarn shelf. Remember that it was quite a hot mess last while, well, spin it around. Of course, it's not like pretty or anything because I have a couple binders of stamps there. My two Christmas binders and my flower fairy binder are sitting there because I was just using it. There's a big ball of super cushy, yummy yarn that I want to make something with. Probably a hat or some mittens, I'm not sure what. And there's a box of flower frogs. But in those two bins on the bottom, those two uh, trash wire trash bins, those are my novelty yarns because I do like to have those handy for doing, um, like if I want to add fibers to a project. And um, and then I was like, I don't do that very often, like to a card project or whatnot. Cause I'm thinking, well, I don't do many of those alter projects anymore because I don't know, I guess I'm like, well, what am I gonna do with this afterwards? And the armoire over there, we just spun around, I don't know if you saw that armoire, that's all full of like packaged cards for sale. And I haven't had, I used to rent a space in a shop but I haven't had that open in a couple of years. Um, I'm not interested in listing online. It's just too many things. It's too fiddly. I don't like that sort of thing, especially for the type of return, you know, that you get on that sort of, uh, you know, you list a pro every single card would have to be listed individually. And, you know, you're going to sell them for a couple of bucks. By the time you've put the time in to ship it, you know, it's really not worth it's not really not worth it, um, and that's not counting the the supplies. I mean, you wouldn't you'd maybe break even really with the supplies. You wouldn't get your time out of it. Um, so yeah, what I do with those, because obviously I've made videos with them and that's what, you know, pays the bills, um, I would, you know, just drop them off in my booth and then the people that run the shop, the main shop, would just sell everything and then I would get like a, um, I would get my profit at the end of the month minus whatever the rent was. A lot of times it was just a wash. I might make a couple hundred bucks over the course of a year. Definitely not much, but at least it gave it a purpose beyond being here. And I think a lot of the reasons I haven't done like these like fiddly, projects that I used to love is because I don't have a place to I don't have anything to do with them when they're done and I guess I'm quite practical when it comes to like things I make like at least if I'm working on a sketchbook it's that sketchbook's not taking any more space whether all the pages are filled or all the pages are not but like if it's like a like a tchotchke or knickknack or craft that I don't really have a purpose for like I love making little books but it's like well how many little books you're gonna use you know I mean how many little notebooks do you need um, and even though I love those little projects, it's like, well, what am I going to do with them if I don't have a place to, like, put them in to sell? Then it's just kind of a, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm less inspired to do it once I see the projects kind of, like, piling up. Um, so that's, so I was just kind of thinking about that. It's like, what do I even like doing anymore? Why don't I like doing these things anymore? You know, because I look at old tutorials or I look through an old magazine. I'm like, oh, I love those, like, kind of fiddly little things with all the little bits and all the little fibers and all the little, you know, gems and beads and all that, you know, good stuff that probably take, like, weeks to make. But it's like, well, what do you do with it afterwards? Um, so, and even looking back at my old tutorials, and it's like, oh, paper beads, those were so fun to make, and they're still sitting in a box in the other room because I haven't had anything to do with them. I haven't had a project to use them on, but I made all of them and all these resin pendants and all these things. Oh, we'll see what I was going to do. I was going through my embellishments because I, after I finished doing the scrapbook calendar, I brought my boxes of embellishments in here, my a couple like pads of paper that I knew would work. Um, and then I was like, oh, I should go through these embellishment drawers while I'm at it because I certainly haven't used a lot of these in a long time. I could probably get rid of a bunch. But then as I was going through, it's like, well, I don't know what I'm going to need. Like when I do, do the scrapbook calendars, it's like, well, I never know what I'm going to grab for an embellishment. I'm not going to know what's going to go with the paper. It's kind of like you need this palette of embellishments before you start a project and then you have all this stuff. You're never going to use it all up perfectly because it's not like you're going to finish the last project of your crafting life and it's perfectly going to fit those 
those seven embellishments you've left over, that's just not going to happen. It's it's weird. It's like you need this big assortment of stuff, but so much of it is just never going to be used because it's just not going to work out mathematically like that. Um, so it's like, well, do I keep these things? Do I keep these random, like, acrylic frames and little lockets and knickknacks that, you know, if somebody saw this and they really liked a tutorial I was doing, they wouldn't be able to find it because it's like material that's probably, you know, 15 years old that's never, you know, it was produced then, you could never find it again. Um, so I don't know, it's just something I was thinking about. It's like, do I even like those fiddly things anymore? It's like, well, I, I kind of do, but I don't know if I would want to put that time into something like that. I don't know. So it's just like kind of thinking about what do I like? What do I actually like? It's the reflections you have at the end of the year. It's like, do I even like making scrapbook pages? Well, I clearly do, even though I haven't scrapbooked since last Christmas when I made my mother the scrapbook calendar. I really enjoyed that. I'm looking forward to printing out some of these photos again from my own scrapbook. So yes, I do enjoy that. And you know, because sometimes it's hard to tell when you do what you love as a hobby for a living, it can be difficult to determine whether you would still do this thing if you weren't um, paid to do it. You know, would I like to, would I like to use markers if I wasn't being paid to use markers? Would I like to do this if I didn't, you know? So it's, it's, it definitely convolutes things because your motivation changes from I'm just making this thing so I want to make this thing to I'm making this thing for a gift or I'm making this thing because my client owns this company and they've paid me to make this thing. You know, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely interesting. It, it adds another dimension to your motivation for why you're doing it. It's like if you go to work every day, are you going to your job because you have a calling and you love doing that or are you going because you need the paycheck? Um, I don't think I do any of my projects for the paycheck. I wouldn't work with clients that I don't like. I turn down more work than I take on because I don't know the company or I haven't built a relationship with them and I'm just not, I don't have the time. And a lot of times I take on work from a client when I really don't have the time to because I just love that company and I, you know, I want them to succeed and, you know, I want to do right by them. Um, and sometimes I do projects because I want to do right by you guys. You guys have been asking for something or requesting something, so I want to do that because that's what you guys want. Um, and I want to do that, but I also want to make sure I'm doing things that I actually feel passionate about because I think it comes through if I'm not if I'm not uh, if I'm not feeling it. So, um, and and the only way I think to to get clarity on that is to take a break and to kind of clear your mind and um, and you know let the good stuff seep back in. I don't know. It's been such a weird year, hasn't it? Um, and then I have so many interests anyway that it's very difficult for me to close the door on any of the interests because I like them all. I'm thinking, man, I really want to knit something. That yarn is so soft. And pretty. I, and that was after organizing my yarn last week, and I'm like, ooh, I want to make something with that. Not that I have a million other hobbies going and a million other projects going, but then again, it feels like I just do the same thing over and over again. So I don't know. I'll be thinking about that. Might be something you want to think about too in your own crafty life. And um, I guess that's about it. We've talked for nothing. <laughs> We've talked for 28 minutes almost about nothing uh, as part of the course. I hope you're still enjoying these sat chats. Let me know in the comments below. I also put a poll on my YouTube channel community tab um, asking what kind of tutorials you'd be interested in seeing. So if you want to leave some input, leave it there and I'll have everything in one place. So that will be good. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend and we will see you next time. Happy crafting and bye!